Welcome back. Okay, so in the last screencast, we went and we installed a new, we searched for and we installed the SoundCloud field module. And now I'm going to show you how it works, okay? And so every, you have to understand, every module is going to need to be configured slightly differently. And so this is where you need to use your brain, okay, to figure out how do we, what do we need to do logically in order to get this to work, okay? So here's an example. I'm going to walk through you, through. I'm going to walk you through the whole process and hopefully start stuff will start to fall into place, okay? Um, so, just to recap, why did we install the SoundCloud field uh, module? Well, because when we go and we add content, when we add the content to the song content type here that we had, um, we were thinking, you know, rather than uploading an MP3 preview, it sure would be nice if we could just link to um, an external uh, SoundCloud player. And this is what, here's an example right here. Here's my friend Paul Federici who has a wonderful song called Strange Disease. Let's say, what if we wanted to actually have this show up um, instead of, of me having to manually upload an MP3 that might actually save, you know, uh, save a lot of, of, of upload time and bandwidth, etc. So let's go do this. So the first thing we need to do, okay, because this is part of the whole the blueprint for adding this content, first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of this MP3 preview. So we're going to go to structure and we're going to change the way the blueprint for content types here. We're going to go in here and we're going to click here's song and we're going to manage the field. So let's go take a look at those fields that we have available to us, okay? And there's our MP3 preview, okay? So let's say, you know what, I, I want to get rid of that, but I'm not going to get rid of it yet, okay? Well, we'll get rid of it later once we know for a fact that SoundCloud field is working, okay? So what I'll do here is let's call this something else. I'll say SoundCloud preview. Okay, and just to distinguish it from the MP3 preview here. And here we're going to select our field type, and you might be thinking, oh, what field type do I use? Well, look at this. Where did this come from? Ah, this is what the module did. By installing and enabling this module on your Drupal site, it went in and it added a new content type to basically your your whole Drupal architecture. So now you have access to a brand new field type here. We can select SoundCloud and the widget for this is just going to be a SoundCloud URL. And I think I think you're smart enough to figure out the rest of this, but let's just walk through and see if it's what you expect. So I'm going to click on save here. And we're adding this new field. And then here we say it has no field settings, so that's fine. We don't have to make any decisions here. Let's click Save Field Settings to get to the next page. And on the next page, we get to configure all the options that we want in particular for this particular song content type. So let's just wait for this to save. Do, 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 do. And let's see what it shows up on the next page. We have the label SoundCloud Preview. OK, so do we make it a required field? Let's just leave it for now. Let's not make it required just in case the song doesn't happen to be on SoundCloud. We're going to say here, now this is, remember, the help text is for whoever is doing the data entry on your sites. It's not going to be for the viewers or the people who are just the site visitors. This help text is in particular for the people, whoever's going to be uploading songs or entering songs into your database. So that could be you, that could be somebody else who's helping you with this website. But you do want to put some sort of help text here because if you don't put help text, you're going to get really confused. Your site's going to get really complicated and you're going to be like, what the hell is this? Okay, so let's put some help text. So we're going to put here, we're going to say copy the um, the the let's say the URL f uh, to so for the SoundCloud pr preview or SoundCloud song for the how about copy the song <laughs> copy the URL for the song on SoundCloud. Hopefully that makes sense. Use some sort of wording that makes sense to you. Okay, so we're going to scroll down. There's some settings here. There's the player width. Yeah, we can actually create a player. There's the height tracks. We can do all sorts of things. You can determine whether or not you want to show the comments in the player, whether or not it auto plays, show the play count, all that stuff, show the artwork. Let's go ahead and, and let's just leave these as is for now. We can go back in and edit that later. Even the color of the player, you can change all that stuff. Okay, number of values. How many song cloud sound cloud links do you want to have associated with each song? Well, for now, let's just leave it at one. Okay, we're just going to have one player per song. So let's go ahead and click Save Settings. And so now, let's check this out. Okay, I'm going to add some new content. And so let's go ahead and add some new content. I'm going to pretend that I'm adding Strange Disease to my database. So the song title is Strange 
disease. The performers, my good friend, Paul Federici. Uh, there we go. The songwriter is Paul Federici as well. The BPM, uh, I don't know what the BPM is. Let's leave that blank for right now. The lyrics, let's just make up the lyrics. There we go. There's our lyrics right there. We won't bother with any cover art. We're not going to put an MP3 preview up. Okay, the genre, we're going to say this is singer, songwriter, and adult, contemporary, and pop, let's say. There we go. So pop is already there, but all these others will be added. SoundCloud preview. We need to add the URL. So there it is right here. Let's copy this, and let's paste this in here, and let's click Save. Oh no, it says SoundCloud is not a valid SoundCloud URL. Well, here's one of the tricky things about this particular module, and I can tell you this, the answer to this right away because I've looked it up before. Um, when you were adding to this, because you were copying through here, this, this is a weird thing, but it actually doesn't like that extra S inside here. Okay, so we're actually going to get rid of that and then actually the other thing we're going to do is we'll edit the help text here to say that. So let's actually do that for now. I'm actually going to go back to structure. We'll abandon this for the time being. And you might be thinking, what? How do you know this stuff? This is just stuff that comes up and I researched it beforehand and I'm telling you now to save you the trouble of having to Google it and figure it out. Let's go ahead and edit this. Okay, copy the URL for the SoundCloud for the song on SoundCloud. Um, do not, or here, your URL, make sure your URL starts with here. We'll just get rid of that S, it doesn't like that. And not, there we go. There we go. So now there's a little, this is what the, this help text is for, okay? Um, you're going to just get rid of that little S inside there. And yeah, there's a way you can go in and you can edit the actual like module to fix that, but we're not going to worry about that. All you need to do is just edit the way you cut and paste this inside here, and it's going to work. Trust me on this, okay? So I'm, I'm changing the instructions to myself just as a little note to self. And sometimes this happens, sometimes a module won't work quite the way you expect it to, and so you're just going to do some Google, a Google search and say, why isn't this module working? And then you're going to read people talking about it saying, oh yeah, I won't accept the S and the HTTP. Okay, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and just start this all over again. Let's add a new song. Let's do this. Strange Disease. The performer is Paul Federici. Songwriter is Paul Federici. We'll leave the BPM blank because I don't know it. Maybe Paul could tell me another day. There's the lyrics. And in this case, oh yeah, so we know, we're going to put the genre here. So what did we say? We said it was pop. And we'll say it's adult, oops, adult, contemporary, and singer songwriter. Okay, there we go. SoundCloud preview. We're going to paste that. Wow, what did I just do? Let's try this. I'm going to get this instead. I'm going to paste that in here, but I'm just going to get rid of that S. Okay, we got rid of that. Let's try this again. See, there's the instructions. Make sure your URL starts with and not. Click Save. Okay, Song Strange Disease has been created. And look, we have our beautiful SoundCloud preview right here. Isn't that cool? Let's see if it works. Isn't that cool? Okay, can I show you a couple extra cool things? Let's go to structure here. If you remember when we were on content types here, let's manage this field. When we were setting, we were setting up that SoundCloud preview module right here, or the, or the, the field right here. Let's edit this, the field settings. Um, we had some options here. Look, we could change the width of the player, this is in percentage, so currently it's set up to take up 100% of the width of the page. The height, that's it, we could show the comments if we wanted to. We're not going to do all the autoplay, but we could show the play count. We could even show the artwork. We could change the player color, and you might be like, what is that? That's a hexadecimal code. If you want to take a look at um, hex, let's see, color, hex, codes, let's find in Google, let's find a color hex code chart. Let's make it, oh, purple. Purple sounds great. That's what that number is right there. 
Okay, I'm going to pop that in. If you didn't follow that, don't worry about it. That's a topic for another screencast, talking about hex codes. Uh, we won't bother putting a default value. Let's save those settings. Let's see what we can do here. There we go. Let's go back and let's find that content. I'm going to go to the content button here. I'm going to go look at strange disease again. And, oh, there we go. Here comes, there's that. And look, it's purple now. Yay. All right, cool. Made that purple. Yeah. I'm not sure why I didn't pull the uh, album artwork and everything. I think maybe we just have to run cron or, or clear the caches or something. But there you go. You now know how to add a SoundCloud preview. We could actually get rid of this label. We don't actually need the label there. You know how to do that, right? You go under structure and manage the, the field settings or under here structure. Let's go there really quickly here under structure. We're going to edit the content type. We're going to manage the display for that. There we go. Content type and song. We go to manage display. And in this case, we see SoundCloud preview. We can hide that. There's a little flash player. You could even switch to HTML5 player if you want. Let's see what that does. I'll click on save. Do, do, do. Okay, cool. Let's close that. And let's just go ahead and reload this. And maybe you decide, you know, maybe I don't even want this 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 album cover right here. Maybe that'll just, there we go, let's scroll down here. There we go, there's the album cover. So it, it does it within the HTML5 player, but not in the Flash cover. So maybe you just don't want to display this from now on. Anyway, hopefully you see how really the possibilities are endless here. Um, and that's just an example of one module, just one module. And there's there's like 7,000 modules there and, and growing all the time. And the modules don't just add extra fields. They can add all sorts of different um different functionality to your site. And to go through every single module is really outside the scope of this tutorial. Um, my, what I encourage you to do, though, is just experiment with them. Okay, And as long as you follow those rules of only installing modules that are A, compatible with Drupal 7, B, actually recommended releases, um, if you stick with that, and if you let the purpose of your website drive which modules you decide to install, and if you just you know, listen to people's recommendations as to which modules to install. You'll end up with a short list of modules that you just really like installing all the time. Um, maybe in the next screencast, I'll walk through a couple of the, the modules that I tend to really like installing. Uh, but that that's really completely up to you, which ones you end up installing all the time, which ones are your go-to modules. Um, and ask questions online. Find discussion boards. Read what people have to say about different modules. And the more you work with Drupal, the more the modules are going to become familiar to you. Um, and you're going to start to know what the different modules are. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, that's my go-to module for this and that. This is probably the part that took me the longest to wrap my head around. Not because I don't understand what modules do per se, but just getting used to what's available out there. It's pretty overwhelming to begin with. So don't don't let it discourage you, though. Just spend some time exploring through the different modules. Um, and in fact, when you actually go to drupal.org, let's go take a look at that project page. Uh, a really nice thing to do, although it can it can really, man, it can, it can be quite uh, overwhelming sometimes, filter by compatibility and just start looking at what's available. If you happen to be interested in, say, you know, events or, or media or mobile or something, at that just take a look at what's available right there okay we'll search through that and start reading what these things do here's a calendar module here's a calendar module right here here's a description of what this calendar module will do okay and we see that's available that's awesome okay cool so this is this is pretty neat you can learn so much by just reading just having a look at what's available here what else? Let's take a look at something like some of this might not make sense to you, but over time it will start to make sense. What is this? What is this community thing right here? Let's check out community. What does that mean? Okay, if I'll filter down by community, we see there's 236. There's a bunch of different things here. Share this. Okay, so if you wanted to add some sort of module that allowed people to share your website or your pages or your content via their social media networks, that's what they mean by community. Okay, profile. If you want to actually allow users to sign up for your website and create their own profile page, kind of like a, a mini Facebook or something. You could install this. There's all sorts of things you can do. Here's another social media module right here. Um, so spend some time exploring through all these. Like I said, I'll probably put together a screencast that will walk through all kind of the 
the the the modules that are happen to be my go-to modules but it really you know it's really completely up to you and what it is that you want your Drupal site to do start with a couple ones as you get used to that start expanding your knowledge from that okay I hope that that is helpful thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time